Tomas, Tomas, we are back, my friend. You know what that means. Time for a little bit more Tasty Live with this market measure sponsored by the CBOE, Sadnoff, sponsored by the CBOE, our friends, CBOE. Yes, I'm... Even the S&P's up 3, NASDAQ up 11. I hope you bought the dip. Russell up 12, the Dow down 100. Don't buy the dip there. I am... Bum, 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 bum. Hold on one second. Can't keep a good NVIDIA down. It's only down $2.70 now. Can't keep a good NVIDIA down. It's trading almost $10 lower than where it is now. I know. I got in two tranches. 30 minutes later. I needed to get in three tranches. Darn you, NVIDIA. Darn you. You just did an SPX trade? We're going to be talking about zero-day options. You, Yeah, I've done 50 trades already this morning. So yes, we, yes. So been we've been, I've been active. Last it's two good days. Good morning. It's been active. Yesterday we were active. We did over 100 trades. Today we did 50 trades. Um, it's cool. I like that. I like when mm -hmm. I'm busy. Mm -hmm. um, I'm Tom you have Salsnuff. good positions again? I'm Tom Salsnuff. He's Tony Batista. Yeah, good positions when they work. Yeah, you had bad positions uh, yesterday. Good two positions Two days ago I had bad today. positions. Um, it's 9-11. It's Tuesday, January 23rd, and um, happy birthday, Mom. Oh, happy birthday. Wow. One, two, three. Oh, happy that's birthday, awesome. Joan. There you go. Nin Ninety-one. I was going to shoot me for saying that. 1991. <laughs> 1991. Yeah. Oh, that's awesome, man. That's phenomenal. Good for you. It's good that's, for a, you. That's, a, that's, a, that's a good. Good, better, good for you, better for her. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yes, yeah. that's awesome. Um, Is she going skiing with you too? No. No? No, she's not going skiing too? Okay. I thought maybe. Her maybe skiing days are over. Yes. Officially I over. I understand. I understand. Hopefully. Um, but she's encouraging She's encouraging me. She's like, yeah. Good, you'll, that's you'll awesome. Be, she's like, you'll be fine. Yeah, because she's got other siblings, other children. Doesn't I actually matter. don't remember my mom ever skiing. My mom never skied. I don't remember my mom. She says she did, but um, the closest my mom got to was going down to Toboggan at Prospect Park to skiing. Uh, yeah, that was the closest my mom got to Colorado too. <laughs> <laughs> Market do. measure sponsored by the CBOE. What did I just do here? I messed something up. Uh, ba bum 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 bum. Not let me being sound. directional in zero days. Ooh. Being directional in zero days. What does that mean? So anyway, I did a zero day trade. Just so you know, I'll tell people because yep. I promised somebody that I would tell them what we did. What we're Sold the straddle forty eight fifty uh, in the zero days, and you bought the wings. We like to go uh, at the expected move, which would be one hundred twenty points. But there were some uh, issues with some of the strikes. They went to a. Uh, to fifty and hundred dollars over a certain price, so you were only able to buy the forty-seven sixty and the forty-nine fifty as the wings. So you did the whole. Yeah, I didn't do a straddle. I did the forty-eight fifty, forty-eight sixty. Close. It's. A, I just in case you know. I, sure. Yeah, both options would probably have pretty close to a fifty delta. Yeah, we'll see. Mm -hmm. um, being directional in zeros. Let's take a look. Pretty interesting piece here. Semi-passive investment means picking up assets and making directional assumptions on them. Strategic option traders, on the other hand, can place trades that will profit based on a market assumption. One of the advantages of trading short premium is the ability to profit even when you're directionally wrong, as long as it's not too wrong. So let's see how this works when it comes to zero days. Okie dokie. Let's do it. This is going to be a lot like the... 45-day time frame? Yeah, it's going to be a lot like 45-day time frame. Using 10 months of intraday data collected every 10 minutes, we examine the performance of the people that write to me, that, why did you every minute? I'm like, because it's just too much data, okay? Mm -hmm. This is this is fine. You get the same re results, but we can, do a, we, can, we can process a lot more. These studies take, even with today's computing power and AI and everything else, these studies still take hours to run. We examined the performance of the zero DT vertical spread sold at the market open, um, and we closed if they reached 25% of max profit. That's the important thing. We allowed them to expire otherwise. So at 25% of max profit, we took our profits. With the short strikes either at the money or $10, $20, and $30 out of the money, so we're selling call spreads and put spreads, mm -hmm. and the long strikes 30 
dollars further out of the money. So these are wide spreads. We're doing directionally wide spreads. We contrasted the overall performance of those when the trade was directionally right or wrong on that day. Okay. A short put vertical was deemed directionally right if the expect close on that day was higher than its open. That's how, that's the only way we could do it. Okay. To deem it directionally right. Okay. Okay. Let's us let us take a look. So, first thing we want to look at is put spreads overall. If you just sold put spreads for the last 10 months and you took profits at 25% and you sold the at the money short strike, the now again, we've had a huge rally. Sure, it's only a matter of how much do you want to make it yeah, right. in so, hindsight because so this we're is not highs, but it's sure. not rocket science. Sure. But um, there have been some downdates. If you're directly correct, you get paid. <laughs> yeah, if you're directly correct, if you still put spreads every day for the last 10 months, your average P&L per day, this is just a one lot, your win rate was in the mid-90s because we sell a little bit out of the money. Mm -hmm. So that your win rate was in the 95 range and your P&L was pretty damn strong mm -hmm. for just selling you know, $30 wide put spreads. Um, let's go to the next slide. And that's with some losses in there because you have a C bar. Mm -hmm. Put spreads when correct. That means you sell a put spread, but the market closed higher on the day. So obviously the win rate is going to be 100 percent, and the average P and L is going to be huge. Um, and the C bar, you never you never lost because you were so correct. So why are you selling a straddle or a synthetic straddle? You just sell put spreads. I mean, they work all the time. If we go up, <laughs> yes. That's right. If we go up, for sure. Let's go to the next slide. So now, put spreads when wrong. Okay, here's your thing. There is a very interesting takeaway from this slide. First of all, your put spreads when wrong, the percentage, when you're wrong, see the percentage of the win rates is still really high? Mm -hmm. Because when you're wrong, the market didn't close down that much. So when you're wrong, it still worked because we were in a bull market. The difference is your average P&L, uh, you didn't make any money. You know, of course, if you sold the at the money, you lost money, the $10, $10 out of the money, which is generally where we're at. When you go to $20 out of the money on the zero DTs, just so you know, you're you're trading a pretty cheap option. I'm going to look right now. Oh, sure. Zero DT, $20 out of the money in the put spread. Like, we're at 55 You sell at $35, you are selling, you're selling a dollar fifty five put. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so you're not selling an exp that's, that's why the That's why the win rate's still so high, because you're far out there. Sure, sure, sure. You you got a a twenty percent chance of a touch. Yeah, you're more likely in this market. You could probably lose on the call side when wrong, but let's see. So the put side, you know, you were you were fine. You were basically you were fine. Basically, mm -hmm. selling puts has worked in this bull market. That's masters of the obvious, but sure. Let's go to the next slide. Let's look at call spreads. So call spreads overall still did really well, except that you made a lot less money. In fact, if you sold out of the money call spreads because some of the losers were pretty bad, you actually lost money. So with a 94% win rate, you actually lost money selling far out of the money, far out of the money. That's the $30 out of the money call spread. And just to put that into context, $30 out of the money call spread, you're only selling a 55 or 60 cent or a dollar call. Something right. in that range, fifty. Hey, to, this is the old "eat like a bird, poop like an elephant." When yeah. you when you're this going this is like too selling like a fifty cents or a dollar call. Like like right. for me today, I well. sold a six dollar call. Right. You know, because that's what I like to sell. Mm -hmm. So um, uh, the and the average P&L is negative for those far out of the money options because when you had losers, they were bad. And on the winner side, even though you want, even though you won high percentage, you didn't make that much money. So selling calls, selling call spreads didn't work out as well. And selling calls when the market goes to all time highs, yeah, it doesn't work out. But well. this is why selling the strangle also worked because everything is pretty good here still. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Let's go to the next Which slide. Which means non-directional, really, is what you're trying to say. In this case, yes. Mm -hmm. um, let's go to the next slide. Perfect. So when you're correct, well, of course you're going to make money 100% of the time, and there's going to be no C-bar because you're never this is, when, this is when you sell a call spread and the market goes down. Mm -hmm. Your payouts are huge mm -hmm. across the board. So if you're bearish and you sell call spreads in the zero DTs, you got paid. Mm -hmm. These are only 25% of max profit. Right, you're not taking it. Yeah, you just, you right. just. This is twenty five percent of max mm -hmm. profit. Mm -hmm. Let's go to the next slide. This is call spreads went wrong, and that means you sold a call spread and the market went higher. These numbers are ugly <laughs> across the board. You still have a high win percentage, but you got slapped, no matter what you did. And this is way better than selling puts. I mean, way worse than selling puts. Selling puts worked out kind of no matter what, but selling calls absolutely did not. Okay. 
So can you go back one slide for one second, Beth? Um, I just want you to take a look. The C bar numbers at the bottom, that's your worst 5% of, you know, that's your average of your 5% of your worst occurrences. Those are way worse than the put side. And it's rare to see this because usually the most of the big losses are on the put side. But when you're doing zero D, DTs, the difference between zero DTs and 45 DTs is on 45 DTs, the risk is always the downside. When you're doing the, the zeros, the risk, at least the last 10 months, has been to the upside. That's all I wanted to point out here. Yeah, when you look at the skew, there's really not too much skew in the zero days right now. Maybe a strike. No, yeah. Mm -hmm. So let's go to the next one. So in many ways, the zero DTE options are just like longer dated options. They're just faster. Okay? Makes sense. Yeah. And when placing... Um, out of the money directional defined risk trades being directionally right is important when trading close to at the money but further out of the money even being wrong can be profitable now we also saw when being right can be a loser mm -hmm. that's the beauty of options you can be wrong and make money you can be right and lose money that's well, one that's of the cool not, things that's not beautiful if you're right and you lose money i know but that's one of the cool things about option mm -hmm. trading over what the makes strategy so important over trade. the recent past being willing to take the additional risk trading closer to the at the money has been able to make up for the large losses and come out more profitable net in the end. As a self-directed investor, picking a direction is your prerogative. Just remember to pick a distance out of the money that fits your desired level of risk. This is why that straddle, which is the at the money, and strangle, which is out of the money swap that we do, statistically has a nice chance of being profitable. I mean, that's why it's worked out so well from a lot of the research that we've done here. Well, again, what I think is cool here, and I'm just going to do something here. What I think is really cool here. You're just going to do something here. You're going to try to close it. I'm going to try to so show air, the trade while we're doing quick, the trade. Yeah, yeah, quick. Yeah. But, 70, 80, 90 bucks but, per contract. Mm -hmm. But one of the things I want to point out here is that when you're when you're trading the zero DTs, it's, it's very important to understand that the risk kind of goes, gets flipped upside down. And there's a little bit more risk on a very short-term level basis to the upside in the zero DTs than there's downside, especially when we're at all-time highs. Mm -hmm. It doesn't mean the downside is free money at all. Just based on the last 10 months, that's the way the numbers have played out. Very good, sir. Let's take a quick 90-second break. Uh, NASDAQ turned uh, uh, red again, down by about 8. Even the S&Ps are still up about 5. Russell's up 9, the leader of the group uh, to the upside, and the Dow down 62. We'll take a quick 90-second break. Um, what do we got coming up next? Oh, joy, your friend and mine, Mr. Scott Sharon, Tasty Trade World Headquarters.